the time during the hunt you get interference, you just have to push one of your arrow pads. You immediately go back to transmit frequency. You can adjust it just and like that. Change. That's right, and that's a good feature. Of course, that, all that's in the manual, uh, but it's real important to know that. That last thing you do is always available immediately on that arrow. Just by pushing arrow either pads. Either arrow. Right. Either arrow. Mm -hmm. We go down once again. We've got preamp gain. Preamp gain, inside of a, a search call, you have two coils. You have a transmit coil and you have a receive coil. Uh, you, you know, another name for this uh, in some of our previous detectors was signal balance. That's right. right. And what you're actually doing is you're balancing the transmit coil to the receive coil. You're optimizing the detector for depth. Yeah, now on this one, um, some areas you have to be real careful because you can get carried away by the transmit power, I mean the receive power being increased. And when you start increasing the preamp gain way up there, uh, your display certainly couldn't get erratic. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to increase it to the point where you have an erratic detector, erratic display. Right. But, and we mentioned this earlier, uh, this is what I called signal balance. I think I used the term signal balance because I'm used to it. When we had the, uh, the uh, transmit boost low or off, when the transmit boost was off, we used the preamp gain to get back some of that depth. Right. right. A proper way of adjusting preamp gain is to adjust it. Go ahead and set your AC motion sensitivity to an acceptable level. Then bump up preamp gain a little bit at a time and check it uh, each time. You, and once you get up to a point where the machine comes unstable, then you back it yeah. back down and you have an optimum preamp gain setting. Yeah, and sometimes that instability or instability is in the air. Obviously, if it's unstable in the air, it's not going to do much better in the ground. Sometimes it works pretty good in the air. When you start sweeping, it picks too much of the trashy targets, the minimal targets, and gives you a jumbled reading. So that's a very critical one, and one shouldn't really play with that till they know what they're doing. Right. Yeah. And any change in the preamp gain should be followed by an air ground balance. Right. Oh, plans. that's oh, we forgot that. That's absolutely important. Yeah. Always read ground balance your detector when you change the preamp gain. That goes for the boost too. Yeah. Taking the transmit boost off or uh, having it on, you have to read ground balance your detector. Right. Absolutely. If you see, we're finished now. It's gone back to the main menu, so we've covered all of the pro adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, let me just emphasize that this detector is already set with preset programs, uh, so don't feel that you have to immediately start utilizing all of these options. Uh, you know, it's going to work just great for you under most conditions in the preset program, so don't feel the pressure immediately to learn all this stuff. Learn them at your own pace. That's right, and one thing, too, I don't know if we did mention the fact that it scrolled through all of them. Uh, you can jump basic options or pro options and then each category on your main menu, just go to the audio or just go to the signal or just go to the discriminate. But if you want to, as we were doing for convenience here, just using the arrows going, they're all tied together now. They weren't in the uh, old spectrum. Right. And so you can go and toggle with that arrow through the entire list of options from right. basic options right through pro Just keep options. pushing that down yeah. button, it'll take you through every one of them. That's and right. then if you go all the way, you're back at the beginning right. again. Now all that's left is go out and buy yourself a new detector. And that's done because people enjoy the hobby and this machine is fun to use. Yeah. Getting in there and adjusting some of these options balances the machine to what you want to do with yeah. it and it's just a whole lot of fun. And remember, as you said earlier, uh, you can't hurt anything. No. The, the, these things are all in the detector. You push the wrong button, you haven't hurt anything. Turn it off, turn it on again, you start. You can't, you can't do anything wrong, permanently. Once you've made changes to either the basic and or the pro options, you can store those settings for future use. From a search mode, press menu. Press enter at preset programs. Use the arrow down control to go to the, pro the custom program position you wish to store your special settings in. And press enter. You are then given three choices. Load loads the settings that have previously been stored in that position. Save will save your new settings with a generic name or a name that you may have previously applied to that slot or the preferred method which is name. Select name and press enter. You now use the arrow controls to select the first symbol, number, or letter of the name that you wish to assign that custom program. Then press enter.
you then use the arrow controls to select the second digit of that name that you wish to apply. Then push enter. You may then select the third digit or if you want to leave a space, simply press enter again. Once you've fully assembled the name that you wish to apply, press menu. You could then turn the instrument off and that program would be ready for you the next time you went to use it or you could press enter, press enter for load, air and ground balance and continue to use the detector using those special settings. Our thanks to Oregon State University, the Campbells and the Spectrum XLT test team. For more information about the Spectrum XLT, contact your local dealer or telephone toll-free 1-800-547-6911.